Hi, this is Andrew Lyles for Parkinson Technologies Park Tech Talk, where we discuss our web processing equipment for the plastics, non-woven, paper, and specialty products industries. Today we have Justin Marriott, product manager for the key filters, and we will discuss how not all continuous belt screen changers are created equal. Well, well thank you for joining us, Justin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, let's start with the, uh, the simplest question. What is a continuous belt screen changer? So a continuous belt screen changer, you know, really lines up under the continuous lineup of screen changers out there. And screen changers, you can really split them into three categories. Your discontinuous screen changers where the line needs to be shut down to change out the screen. Uh, those are your manual style screen changers. Mm -hmm. You have your discontinuous screen changers. That means really that the line can either be, has to be shut down or limited in production to change the screen. That's where your slide plates and a lot of your dual bolt style screen changers fall into. Uh, and then continuous, which is referring to the fact that the line doesn't need to shut down to change the screen mm -hmm. and it can create a very uniform uh, pressure standpoint. Okay. Uh, in that category is the continuous belt screen changer, the belt referring to the screen media, which is a whole belt of screen, a coil generally 120 feet long of reverse Dutch weave screen. And the screen changer is going to slowly advance that across the filter head uh, to keep uniform pressure. Okay. Now inside the continuous belt screen changer though, you can really branch it off into two different styles. One that uses melt pressure to advance a screen and one that uses a mechanical puller to advance the screen. Okay, can you describe the two different methods for advancing the screen? So when it comes to the two, it's basically your melt pressure is gonna use the melt pressure created from the extruder to advance that screen. And the other style, the mechanical puller is gonna use a clamp and puller mechanism to physically advance the screen. Okay, can you give us a little bit more about the pressure method? Yeah, the pressure method is your most common style. So this is the one that's been around a good 20 plus years. Right. It's the one that most people uh, use out there in the continuous belt style screen changer market. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I was saying before, it's using the melt pressure to advance it. So where the screen comes, enters the screen changer that comes through the inlets, goes across the breaker plate and comes out what we like to call the outlet. The inlet and the outlet since there's a slot in there to keep it from extruding material out of the inlet and outlet, mm -hmm. it runs cooling water to freeze that plug and hold the seal tight. Uh, and the way you know it's going to advance it is the melt pressure coming off the extruder is pushing on those two plugs. Now, since the outlet has a wider slot, it's going to create more of a force against the outlet than the inlet. Uh, and what it'll do is slowly heat up the outlet. So generally reduce the cooling water or shut it off turn on a heater, heat up that plug, and once that plug loosens up enough, the pressure applying to that plug will push the plug and advance the screen across that breaker plate. Okay. So are there any drawbacks to the melt pressure method? Uh, yeah, there's two major drawbacks when it comes to that style method, and it comes you know, to how, how it actually operates in advancing that screen. So as I said, it heats up that plug uh, to advance it. So to do that, it becomes very material dependent. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have a material that doesn't want to be heated up to a point that it can be pushed, say polyester PET, which, which is a good example, you know, it has a pretty fine line of being a, a good solid uh, before it goes to too much of a liquid. Uh, with that, if you start heating that plug up to the point that the melt pressure applying on it can push it, uh, the the plug isn't strong enough at that point. So you'll lose that plug, right. shoot it out the outlet, and you'll make a mess. Uh, and it just won't work in that style. Uh, another example would be your uh, elastomers. Uh, since of the large rubber content in those, the oil, uh, it also has a very soft plug. It can it has a good enough plug that when you run the cooling water to it, it can form a plug. But the moment you go to heat that plug up to do that advancement uh, process, mm -hmm. you'll, the plug isn't strong enough. So you'll lose the plug and again, make a mess. Uh, so they won't work in those two applications are, are good examples. So if you have any type of material that doesn't like to operate in a, a fine line between uh, solid and liquid, it's gonna struggle. Um, gotcha. Another disadvantage is the, basically the cycle times or how often can you pull the screen. So with that method, heating it up, the cooling it and advancing it, um, you're really looking at about a three to five minute cycle time there to pull it. Uh, and even after it's done its cycle, you're looking at another 10 to 15 minutes before it can perform another cycle. 
Um, with that, if you're having material that you're running that has a lot of contamination in it, you need to advance that screen a good amount through that, across that breaker plate to keep your pressure uniform. It's going to struggle to keep up in those type of applications. Okay. So to offset some of those cycle times and the downtime you would have, are there better methods that you can uh, utilize? Certainly, that, and I touched on before the mechanical method that I talked about, which is the other style that you can, you can use, mm -hmm. uh, eliminates a lot of those issues. So with the mechanical uh, style, you're not heating up that outlet at all. You're still running the cooling water at all times to hold that plug, but the cooling water runs continuously the whole time, never gets cut off and it never is heated. And we're using a clamp and basically a, a ram, puller ram, to pull that that screen across. So we're mechanically pulling it. What we gain there is being able to work on applications that the melt pressure can't work on, your polyesters and your elastomers as an example. Since we're never heating up that outlet, we're keeping a good solid plug 100% of the time and we can pull those plug with, with it. Okay. Um, and then when we're talking about the cycle times, same idea since we can perform a cycle movement of advancing that screen in roughly 30 seconds, at most 60 seconds, we can perform a cycle a lot quicker. And then since we're not waiting for it to solidify that plug again and we're cooling it all the time, we always have a solid plug. Therefore, our time of when we can make another pull is a lot quicker. So we can do it in about every two minutes, we can pull it. So about 30 seconds to complete a move, two minutes between each move. So if you have a material that's a lot of, has a lot of contamination or somebody drops something into an extruder, which is not totally unheard of, I've <laughs> seen it, uh, you could, cycle all that material out that you're really trying to get out and keep running. You don't have to worry about ever having to get to a shutdown mode because it can keep up with a high rate of contamination. Yeah. So with everything you're saying, it sounds like the mechanical method is the best possible method you could use? Certainly, it, it, it lends a lot of advantages. So the melt pressure has a nice bit where it has that simplicity that's nice, uh, but you're leaving a lot on the table with it. So. If you uh, are ever thinking about running post-consumer recycling or materials with a lot of contamination, or you think that you might have to move the screen changer to a different line to run another style of uh, product, uh, you're kind of pigeonholed yourself with the, the melt pressure, while the mechanical method keeps a lot more of an options open on you and it gives you a lot more advantage. Excellent, okay. Well, thank you so much. We definitely appreciate it. I'm Andrew Lyles, and this was another Park Tech Talk. We spent time with Justin Marriott and we learned the performance difference between belt screen changer designs and why they're not all created equal. If you found this video helpful, please share it, like it, and comment below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.